everybody, Tiffany Epiphany here. Thank you so much for joining me on my YouTube channel and being a part of my IVF journey. So if this is your first time, go ahead and like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click on that notification bell so that you get the alerts when I upload new content. And for those who are coming back, Welcome back, y'all. So I am going to overload y'all today. <laughs> I'm going to overload y'all today with a whole bunch of information because, to be honest, I have been filming, but I've been having some hiccups with filming, like my phone died one time in the middle of me filming, and I've just been in between appointments, and um, I've been exhausted, too. That's another thing. And I'm also getting ready for a trip to Vegas. So it just really boils down to I am going to upload this video and it's just going to have a myriad of things on here. So, um, you know, saddle up, okay, because it's going to be a ride. It's going to be a ride. Saddle up. <laughs> it's going to be a long ride. Um, so let us start with where do I want to start? Acupuncture. Okay, so we'll start with acupuncture. Actu acupuncture is going really well. Um, I am going through um, just, you know, the regular acupuncture where um, my acupuncturist, you know, puts the needles in me. She is also using, um, like, it looks like a TENS unit, and I don't know if anyone has ever... Um, had like muscle soreness or, um, or you know, um, lifts weights or runs track or whatever. But I know I have sciatica, and my dad had an old tens unit um, that I that I used to use to help loosen up you know the muscles in my back. Um, but it looks like a tens unit, and it's called ATP therapy or something like that. Don't stop me the line. No, <laughs> I'm not. But I'll put it in the comments. I'll put it. I'm, I'm sorry, in the description box, what ATP is. And it, it basically is you put these patches on, well, she does. She puts the patches or one of her assistants puts the patches in different spots. And usually it's like um, on my stomach and up here um, or like on my, in, on my inner thigh, like near my kneecaps and up here. And my understanding, it's supposed to send like electrical pulses to certain parts of the body and it's supposed to help me relax so like the protocol that i'm on right now is to help with relaxation and stress relief and then there is another protocol that is she, that she is using it's called pem matter of fact let me get the brochure That way I can read it directly to you. PEMF, Pulse Electromagnetic Field Therapy. And what this essentially does is it increases blood flow um, to uh, specific areas of the body. Uh, let's see, I'm going to read this pamphlet. I mean, there's a lot of information in this pamphlet. I'm not going to belabor the moment and read it all, but it uh, deals with pain, helps reduce, eliminate pain, uh, helps with stress, and it lowers your heart rate and blood pressure. There's, um, again, more details, but um, that is the therapy that I am, uh, or protocol, yeah, the therapy protocol that I'm on. So benefits of PEMF therapy, pain relief, athletic recovery, enhanced muscle function, decreased inflammation, improved blood oxygenation, improved circulation, stress reduction, wound healing, and bone mending. So for me, the stress reduction um, is a part of my protocol, but also improved circulation and decreased inflammation is another part uh, of my protocol uh, because we want there to be increased blood flow and circulation to the uterus so that when I do go through my um, my transfer, you know, it's, it's my understanding that, you know, you want that blood flow there. You want a good, healthy um, blood supply going there 
to that area. That is that. Um, it is going really, really well. I'm enjoying it. Um, the more and more I go, I am becoming more and more acclimated to it and more relaxed. I will say today, <laughs> I had acupuncture this morning, and today she put a needle in the top of my head, like right up in here. And I didn't know that she was gonna go there because normally she does it in my ears, in my wrists. Um, she does it in my near my navel, in my um, in my legs, like inner like inner thigh, but below my kneecaps. And then she does it in my feet and ankles. And so when she oh, and she does one right here, right here. And when she went to go, <laughs> this is so funny. Because she she went, I'm laying on the bed, and she went behind me, and she starts doing like, like this. So I was like, I was like, you trying to get in there? She's like, yeah, normally I could, yeah, normally I could get through. I was like, oh baby, this ain't regular. We these clip ins. Let me. I was saying, let, let me unclip it for you. Let me unclip it for you and move it out of the way. She's like, okay, okay. <laughs> so I'm in here digging and unclipping and shifting. I was like, like right about that? She's like, perfect. She's like, bing. She just stuck it in there and went on about the business. But that thing was so funny. It was so hilarious. And when, and when she was about to leave, she's like, I'll find it. So, so that was funny. Um, but yes, acupuncture is going extremely well. Um, I selected my donor with the help of my line sisters. I am so excited about that. I put in the order on yesterday and it should be shipping off to my clinic. So excited about that. I was going to do some filming on that whole thing because my line sisters, they are hilarious. They are, they are, they listen, they, they. That's a, that's a motley crew right there. Um, but that morning, it was it was Sunday when they came over. Um, today is Tuesday. That morning, I went out with some other friends to brunch to a, 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 a spot here in Jacksonville. And it was a new spot for us. And when I tell y'all, we had, we had bottomless mimosas. And I, you know, this body ain't what it used to be. This body is not what it used to be. I had three, three mimosas. And I think normally, normally two is like my max, but I can do three. I can do three. And I think what it is, is the glasses were like this tall. So they had been about 16 ounces, 16 ounce glasses. And all but this much was champagne so they were putting in like <laughs> i mean we were sitting at the bar so i saw it i thought they were pre-filling the drinks i mean because they were going so fast um they were pre-filling the drinks and they were putting in like this much juice so um sunday i after i left brunch i passed out i i mean I, I still had on my brunch clothes when I woke up at like 4.30. I still had my earrings in my ear, <laughs> in my ears when I woke up at like 4.30, 4.45, something like that. Like literally, my line sister was calling me and was like, hey girl, give me your address. Um, so, cause they were on the way. <laughs> so, yeah. So I didn't do any filming cause when I woke up, I was, I was tired, child. I was. I had on my African mumu. I mean, I ain't had no bra on. I was like, mm -mm, this thing. Mm -mm, I'm not. I'm just not into it. But we got the job done. We got a donor. It took us about about two hours. Two hours to narrow it all down um, to what it was that you know I wanted and. Um, 
also, you know, to rule out all the genetic stuff um, that we didn't want. So excited about that. It is on its way to the clinic. So we got acupuncture. We got, we picked out the donor. Let's see, what else has been going on? Um, oh, 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 so I've been having uh, my my uh, blood draws and everything. I got my medications last Thursday. I got my medications last Thursday. I was quite overwhelmed by it. Let me tell you, when you get all of these medications and then there's all of these needles and I mean, I just, I instantly became like, overwhelmed like oh my gosh what am I gonna do with all this I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess it up um but I ended up actually just YouTubing some videos on how to take the medications and then I didn't realize that uh, my appointment this morning which is a or was rather because I already went to the appointment was a um, ultrasound my initial ultrasound and blood draw she was going to, my nurse was going to do a medication teaching. So I was thinking to myself, okay, Tiffany, you flipping out for no reason because she's going to share with you. She's going to, you know, demonstrate for you how all of this works. But I think in between, um, you know, my nurse giving me, uh, you know, showing me how to do it and also the YouTube um, clips that I looked up, I have a pretty good handle on how I'm going to do this. Um, but I had my let's see i had my now i'm trying to think so last week was the why am i losing anyway i you know what let me just get my calendar that's the whole point of me having this sucker anyway okay so y'all might remember my calendar from like the first or the second video that I did. So anyway, I printed out my calendars. So we're still in August. This is September. So last Wednesday. Oh, no, no, no. What's today? 25th. No, today's the 25th. Okay. So this is my initial, today was my initial, yeah. And I stopped my, um, my birth control on Sunday. So I stopped my birth, birth control on Sunday. We picked out the donor on Sunday. Today was my um, baseline um, scan and blood work. So they just want to basically look at my uterus and make sure it's where it needs to be. And uh, my endometrial lining is, you know, is where it needs to be as far as um, thickness and all of that. I did that today. Um, and everything looked good. Uh, the the nurse was uh, saying that I had they could start they could see the follicles starting. So that is everything. I feel like I had another appointment that I missed that I did not tell y'all about. Oh, you know what? I don't know that I told y'all about my trial transfer, which was, dang, I'm near three weeks ago. Wow, time is flying. Time is flying. I don't think I told y'all about my trial transfer. Well, the trial transfer, well, actually, it ended up being like an HSG. And they basically, with an HSG, they just like squeeze iodine in your uterine cavity and and through your fallopian tubes just to make sure that there are no blockages and everything was fine there so okay we are completely updated on blood work all that kind of stuff there i have my medications we are good to go on that um i start my injections on thursday initially on my calendar it said friday but because with my initial blood work when I did my genetic testing and all of that, seeing as all of that um, came back with, I have, okay, so with me having PCOS, I have 
a high AMH um, level. I have high, a high AMH level, and AMH stands for like anti malaria. Mal Listen, A M A M H, uh, anti M something hormone. Okay, and basically that um, that hormone um, is connected to the amount of eggs that you have. So if you have a high AMH, that means you have a high egg reserve. If you have a low AMH, that means you have, a, it's indicative of a low egg reserve. And depending on your age, um, this may be, I won't say a good or a bad thing, but you know what I mean. It may be advantageous or not. Well, anyway, um, so, if you are like someone my age, 38, I think the normal AMH is, a, is supposed to be around like one point something to maybe three point something, I think. Um, because as you get older, your egg supply uh, decreases because you're born with, the amount of eggs that you're born with is a set number, period. You, you don't produce anymore. You're just born with it and that's it. And so, of course, over time, as you're having a cycle and things of that nature, you know, you lose an egg. Um, and because I have PCOS, which means I don't ovulate properly um, or ovulate every month, then that means I have a higher egg, um, yeah, a, well, higher follicle supply. Um, so... For my age, I'm really not, my, my AMH is like six point something. So it's like double what it's supposed to be. Nonetheless, um, in this instance, I believe that is a good thing because that means I can get a lot of follicles retrieved or a lot of eggs retrieved. And that'll be a good thing for my IVF because then I'll have a lot to, I guess, choose from like um if you know if some of, if some of the eggs are are no good or you know if um once they are in in once they are you know joined with the sperm let's just say some of them don't um, develop correctly then there are more to choose from so that is that on that we have um good blood work all that um let's see what else um i just feel like i'm rambling all over the place it's all good though because like i said y'all just gonna have to hold on for the ride um so yes i start my injections on thursday because my amh levels are high so i guess they just want me to go on here and start because this is a good thing. Um, so I'll be starting with the follow stem and the HCG shot. So two shots, I'll be taking two shots every day up until they tell me to stop. And then I'll be taking another med medication. Well, I'll get to that when we, when we cross that bridge, I'll get to that. But I am on schedule with everything Whew. I know that was a lot for y'all that was definitely a lot for me so yeah that is that I wanted to also talk a little bit today about how you can support a mom or a a woman who is choosing to be a single mom by choice and I am speaking from my experience and and you know I've, I've <laughs> I share the start of this journey with with everyone um, pretty much right when I you know got my calendar and everything so I'm speaking from the experiences that I've had just basically in this last month 
And I wanted to share this because I want women who are daring to um, begin this journey to do it unapolog unapologetically and do it without feeling the blows of stigma and ultimately, potentially, going on this journey alone and in silence. I also want the ringside folk, the folks in the stands, the folks on the outside to get a better understanding of what it is like to choose this path so that they may, if they choose to engage, engage from a supportive space, a compassionate space, a loving space, um, so as to help these women along their journey. So, if you are someone who knows someone who is going through this journey and you are wanting to be of support, this video is for you, or at least this section <laughs> of the video is for you. And if you are a woman who is contemplating this journey, this is for you as well. Um, I had my thoughts kind of broken down into four different topics. Um, I, ha I have them written down actually in my journal. Here. But after thinking about it and going over the points and just reflecting on what I've experienced, I kind of felt like, you know what? It's it's really not four different points. It's really one big point that can be seen from different aspects or different um, viewpoints. But it's, it's one big point. And that one big point is uh, compassion, I think. I think that one big point is just extending compassion and understanding to these women. And in doing so, these are the things that I would encourage um, those who are on the sidelines, those who are ringside, those who are in the stands and watching uh, uh, and are, are, are spectators and supporters, this is what I would, would encourage you to do. So the first thing is be a listener, be a supporter. And there are going to be things that, okay, I'll start, I'll start with me. I'll just speak from my perspective. There are so many things that I want to tell my family and my friends. Um, but in some instances, I, I feel like I can't because they just won't understand or it's going to come with some scrutiny or criticism um, or some type of, <laughs> uh, I'll say ignorant, misguided comment. Um, and so with that being said, I am very selective about the, the intimate about sharing who I share the intimate parts of the very very intimate parts of my journey with and not and again I'm sharing with you all intimate parts but I mean I just mean like the the things that like just really shoot across my mind and I really have to get it off my chest right then and there just to extinguish it those things and there's a very select few people that I have so for those of you who are supporting and you, you know, if you're not sure, if you know, uh, you know, whether you're gonna be team, 
you know, single mother by choice, then I'll invite you to share with that person. Hey, I, you know, I'm just not in the space to, um, you know, receive this, or I, I don't think I would be a good person to, you know, be on your team in that way. So that that mom, um, or that that single mother by choice who is striving to be a single mother by choice, so she she'll know that okay, maybe I shouldn't talk to so and so, and. On the flip side, for those individuals who are going on this journey alone, be very selective with who you share your your intimate stuff with. And that may require that you be very diligent about who you allow in your circle during this time. But the biggest thing is to be a listener and to be a, a good supporter. Um, that may mean asking, hey, what is it that you need? How can I help? Are there any appointments that you have coming up that I need to be there? Or, you know, if you're feeling, you know, blue today, send me a blue heart emoji, something, anything to show some type of support. If she just wants to tell you how stressed she is because she just doesn't know what she's doing and things feel crazy, you know, be that listening ear for her so just listen and be supportive um i wrote down ask how you can help but i've already mentioned that you know just be that be that you know person that friend that says hey how can i help um also for my um my single moms to be be okay with asking for help and again that um is for individuals who you feel are, are open to that and, and, and you can trust with that, ask them for help. I ask that individuals who are being supportive, that they do their research. Do their research about single motherhood by choice. Do your research on IVF. Do your research on those types of things. Um, and the reason why is because I feel like with my process, <laughs> sometimes the questions that I get asked and the comments that are made are just so off the wall and and crazy. Um, and I won't repeat some of the things that have been asked of me or have been said, but... Especially, well, I'll just say it. Questions about or statements about the donor, the fitness of the donor. I think if it's asked in a way that is back with you having done research on that kind of thing, then it'll be okay. But if you just out the gate, Say things like, well, what if you pick an axe murderer? That, it's not helpful. It's, it's not helpful. Um, what if you pick a donor and he's retarded? Like, that's not helpful at all, at all whatsoever. And I think it robs the person who is going through the process of their part in how this child is going to be raised in other words well just because the donor is an axe murderer then that means you know the child is going to be an axe murderer never mind the fact that the mom is you know has a doctorate is self-sufficient um, pays her bills is a good person, um, has a supportive family, you know what I mean, stuff like that. And and honestly, it boils down to this whole notion of nature versus nurture, right? Like, yeah, some of us by nature has certain characteristics. Some of us by nature have, uh, you know, are, are predisposed to certain diseases and um, certain mental health challenges or 
um, even certain physical health challenges. But there's also the nurture part and the nurture part um, plays a, a huge, you know, significant role in how an individual shows up in the world. And the truth of the matter is, you know, if you think about the, the, the mass murderers and the killers and all this kind of stuff here that we know of, uh, they were good people. They were raised by great people. So it's, we can't just say things like, especially when we're coming from a place of fear, you know, what if you pick an ex murderer? Because honestly speaking, you know, some of the folk that we done laid up with, they might be ex murderers, but you know, they might be trash, garbage, baby daddies. Don't take care of their kids. And I feel like I would be better off not having to deal with that at all. Uh, you know, I know some women who have been married or haven't been married and have children by men who don't take care of their kids, don't want to be fooled up with the kids. And they have a headache just even dealing with that. And they have a headache with seeing their children deal with that. I don't have to deal with that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have to deal with the drama of that. It's better off that I not even know. And even if he is an axe murderer, we don't know nothing about it. Me and the kid, we don't know anything about it. And that is the best way to go. The other point that I like to make about this is that it's interesting how, <laughs> and, and I'm going on this topic because I think this is the, the one that irks me the most. I would bet a whole check that I know more about my donor than any person who has said anything like that to me. Like, what if you pick an axe murderer? I probably know more about my donor than they know about their partner. Because if you did your research, that's why I say do your research. If you did your research on sperm banks and how they operate, they go through extensive testing extensive genetic testing, family history. Um, some of them even have like personality tests, handwriting exams, things of that nature to, so that parents, or I'm sorry, so that, you know, or it could be parents, parents, individuals, whatever, who are going to pick a donor, they are fully informed of what it is that they're getting. And they can make a conscious wise decision as to what they would like their potential child to look like, be like, what qualities they want them to have, X, Y, and Z. So, yeah, we're going to just ask that you refrain from using um, words or phrases like, what if you pick an axe murderer? Or what if he's retarded? Or what if he's a killer? Or what if he's... Don't do that. It's it's just it's just ignorant. Um, and do your research. Do your research on on um, sperm banks. Do your research on IVF. Do your research on just um, alternative reproductive measures. And do your research, especially. I'm going to speak as a black woman living in the black community, living a black experience. If you are a, a person who identifies as a black African American or a person of color, um, please do your research because this is something that isn't talked about much in our community. However, with me being in the community and me being a part of groups where women are choosing this path and moreover, women are being faced with not being able to easily have a child, facing infertility challenges, uh, facing male infertility challenges, facing all kinds of challenges. This is something that is really on the horizon. We just don't talk about it. We're just not in the forefront with it. Um, I heard someone say, I've never heard of anyone do this before. I thought this was just what white people do. And they could be, I mean, they, they, 
they could be, they are so wrong. That's what I'm trying to say. They are so wrong. That statement could be farthest from the truth because there are so many people of color that are choosing other routes towards parenthood and for the woman especially the black woman the successful black woman who has been taught and it has been, been drilled in her all of her life to go to school don't mess with the boys get an education get a good job then settle down we are now in our late 20s early 30s realizing that you know either our fertility is impacting um, us being parents or that our single singleness uh, whether it's because we're choosing to be single or whether it's because we just can't find nobody tun, 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 is putting us in a place to consider other options we are considering other options and what we're not addressing or what we're not teaching in our community is that for black women we're not these hyper fertile beings that everyone thinks that we are oh you you know so you're drinking what what are y'all drinking and everybody popping up pregnant you look at her she get pregnant that's not everybody's story and as we get older our fertility decreases that is just the science of it all and this is not anything that we're talking about we're not talking about fertility we're not talking about egg freezing we're not talking we're not talking about these things so we end up being my age facing alternatives to parenthood um so that is what i wanted to share with you all what was on my mind um, because it's hard enough it's, it's, it's just hard enough already trust and believe me you and I think that you know all of the current single mothers by choice and the ones who are on this path to becoming single mothers by choice we mourned we had a funeral for our dreams I'm pretty sure most would say you know what the dream that I envisioned and granted there are some who are like I never wanted to be married I never thought of you know walking down the aisle I, and, and I understand that but I think some of us did imagine that you know we would meet Prince Charming get married have kids live life happily ever after or we just imagined that it would be easy and it would just happen and it's not so we had to have a funeral for those dreams we had to mourn those dreams and that is a process in and of itself so for a mom i'm sorry for a woman who gets the the courage enough to to entertain something different after watching or experiencing her dreams crumble we need to be celebrating and applauding these women I think that it is a courageous act to do what I am doing to say that I am not going to allow not having a partner or a husband dictate or keep me from becoming a mother I mean I'm already a mother technically but you get what I'm saying I'm not I'm not going to allow that to happen and so that means I have to go against what society thinks I have to go against what you know potential um, religion uh, thinks I have to go against you know what 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 tradition says I have to go against other people's fears and other people's insecurities being projected onto me I have to go through all of that and these are things that I'm speaking about that I have already experienced and I've only been in this thing for a month it is a lot so support these women in their decisions moreover trust them 
I think that also speaks to just a lack of trust. I I just couldn't fathom some of the responses that I got. I couldn't fathom in a million years that those responses would have came from the people that I heard them from. Because these people know me. They know me pretty intimately. And they know that anything I put my hands to, I accomplish, I do, I finish, I complete, I perfect. And I know this for myself. And so it's like, so now the world stops or, or you know, the magic stops because I choose to have a child on my own. I've been doing things on my own for, <laughs> dang, I mean, since I was 18. So what does having a child and people have children on their own all of the time? Oh, it's going to be stressful and it's going to be a lot. And Okay, and that's life. Life is a lot. And to be honest with you, I buried a child. I birthed the child. I looked at my child, dead in my arms, and I buried him. I don't think life can get any harder than that. And here I am, almost five years later, still standing strong, still thriving, still living, still doing my thing. I mean, I might be fat, but <laughs> I'm still fat and I'm happy. Okay, doing my thing. So trust, trust these women. They had to go through a lot emotionally, a lot. They're, they're having to go through a lot physically, a lot mentally to even get to a place of making that decision. Applaud them, encourage them, support them, love on them. You may not agree with it, but that woman had to go through something to get to that place. So be supportive. All right, y'all. I feel, you know, my help coming on. Um, <laughs> like I'm going to start preaching and going in. But that is just, you know, some of my thoughts. I told y'all this was, you know, going to be a, a rough ride. I told y'all to hold on to your horses. But I just had to get all of that out for today. Um, so I am excited. We are into the thick of it. Into the thick of it. Into the thick of it. Ooh. Dun, 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 We.